1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 through 15. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. Be each one should be should build with care. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. This is uh, a really important passage in Paul's argument for division, um, for unity. He's he's arguing for unity in a church that is experiencing division. And as he goes through that, he, he begins to talk about the structure of the church itself. In the preceding verses, he's already called the church a building a temple, a field. And now he's taking that idea, not of the field, but of the building and applying it. And it begins with this. By the grace God has given me. By the grace God has given me. These things are connected to this word by, right? Whatever's going to come next, whatever Paul's going to get to, it is done by the grace that God has given. And this is just important because we're recognizing even from the outset that Paul recognizes any work that he does, the glory goes to God. To God be the glory for what's about to come. I laid a foundation. And this word shows up here, foundation, and here, foundation, here, foundation. So we've got three mentions of the foundation. Paul says, I laid a foundation as a wise builder. This word, wise builder, we've got to be a little careful with it. We, th- we think of um, maybe that, that Paul's viewing himself as wise and that, that's somewhat the case. This is probably somewhat of a title for like a, for like a project manager. Um, someone who oversees the building or the, he, he makes the calls at the end of the day. Um, so it's a role in construction. So Paul's saying, I laid a foundation as a wise builder. As a wise builder, Paul lays a foundation and someone else is building on it. So we're going to take this and to understand this sentence that Paul has laid a foundation as a, you know, as a wise builder, as the, the head of construction, someone else is, is building on it. This, this word build also shows up quite a bit. We have builder, we have building, which is a, another form, right? We have build over here, build with care. Um, anyone builds on the foundation. Um, And then even down here, the quality of someone's work. And this is another use of the same idea. Um, What has been built survives. That's six, builder. Seven, the builder. Eight, will suffer loss, but only as one being saved. So we, we are seeing just already that foundation and building... Right, and I'm using that not in the noun, but in the verb. The foundation and building on that foundation are two major themes in this. Let's so let's get back to this verse, verse ten here. So Paul says, "I laid a foundation as a wise builder. That's his role, project manager. Someone else is building on it, and and we should take this to be a reference to the church in Corinth. Okay." What Paul is saying is that I came in and I established the church, okay? But he was only there for 1.5 years. And so someone else building on it is a reference to the pastors 
and leaders now building the Corinthian church. Whoops. Building the Corinthian church. Someone else. These other people are building on the foundation. They're not establishing a new one. They're building on it. And this is a great honor, right? It is a great honor to build up the church. And Paul gives them a warning, right? Beginning with the word, but each one should build with care. Not everything laid upon the foundation is good. Some of it's going to be good. Some of it's going to be bad. Four, right? And here's his reason. Why, why should I build with care, Paul? Why should I build with care? Well, because four, no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid. So this is good. We have this word foundation. We can ask ourselves, what does it mean? Which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the foundation. He is the foundation. He is the foundation. Jesus Christ, and if we're thinking about Paul in Corinth, he said, I resolved to know nothing among you, but Christ and him crucified the gospel, right? The gospel and Jesus Christ is the, the foundation, right? And he's saying, no one, no one can lay any foundation other than the one which is already laid. So you can't, you can't change the gospel. That, that, is, the, that is the case. It's not going to change. Jesus Christ is that gospel. His church, the church, will always be built on this. The church can exist on no other foundation. The church will always be on Jesus Christ. So our so Paul's work was to, to lay the foundation. The people who remain, their work is to build on that. And he says, now speaking about those people again, so he's kind of picking back up when he talked about with the care. He says, if anyone builds, if anyone builds on this foundation, Jesus, using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw. These are different building materials, right? You've got gold, you've got silver, you've got costly stones. Um, in fire, these things are going to remain. They're not going to be burned up. They're not going to be consumed. And then you have wood, hay, and straw. These other three. And we tend to view these three in categories so there's like the first three and the second three and we're always like what do these different things mean and we'll kind of talk about that a little bit but that's really not the main point because what what is the point of of the gold silver wood straw hey these are the materials right these are the things this is what we can build with and the the thing about this is that paul's about to show us is that we don't know. We don't know always what we're building with. So he's, he's making the point here. If anyone builds on this foundation using one of these materials, their work will be shown for what it is. There is an element of mystery to these materials. The reason they're not defined clearly is, is because uh, we don't always know when someone is building on the foundation of Jesus. We don't always know if what they're building is good, if it's meaningful, or if it's not good, if it's pointless. Because we're not going to find out in this life. In fact, the day will bring it to light. And this reference to the day is a reference to what's called the Bema Seat. I don't know if I'm spelling that right, but it is a day not of judgment of separating the um, sheep from the goats. It's a, it's a day of reward, actually, and it's a day of reward for the church. So this is not judgment. This is the giving of rewards. The day will bring it to light. In God's rewarding, he's going to be just. He's going to be good. He's going to be true. He's going to give us what's, what's rightly deserved. So the day will, will show what we've built on the foundation. If it's gold, silver, stones, wood, hay, or straw. It will be revealed how. How is God going to reveal, reveal this? It will be revealed 
So this is that will be shown. Same idea here, right? It will be shown, it will be revealed with fire. So you don't know, you're looking at this, this temple, you're looking at this great building, and you don't know exactly what's been used to make it. Is it, you know, wood with gold on top or is it solid gold? Well, it's going to be revealed with fire. The fire will test the quality. And this is coming back to these materials. The fire is going to reveal what we've been doing. The fire is going to reveal our work. It's going to test the quality of each person's work. Paul, to this point, has been talking about those who build, right? Those who build. And we think of those who build as leaders, and rightly so. They are the ones who are going to do lots of the work in terms of building the church. But this teaches us, these words teach us that each person... Each person is going to have something to show for on that day. Whether or not you are a pastor, whether or not you are a Bible study leader, we all uh, will have the, our works tested. And if what has been built survives, right? And the only way it would survive is if it's gold, silver, costly stones, right? Wood, hay, and straw wood. And that's where the two kind of side division comes from. There are those things that will persevere through fire and there are those things that will be destroyed. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. And that gets back to the day, right? This day that's being mentioned again is a reference to the Bema Seed. It is the giving of rewards to the church, not a day of judgment. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If you've built well on the foundation, there will be a reward. So that's option one. If what's been built survives, the person will receive a reward. Here's option two. If what has been built is burned up, the builder will suffer loss. And so we have to kind of put a question mark. What do you mean suffer loss, Paul? But yet will be saved, okay, even though as one, only as one escaping through the flames. So that's option two. There are those who are building on the church. They're building well. They'll receive an award. And, and there are those whose work in this life is going to be burned up. The builder will suffer loss. Why? Why is the builder in suffering loss? How? how? Because, because here's the foundation, right? And they built in this life what they thought was going to be this incredible church, right? They thought that they were building the church. They... They maybe took their, their group from 50 members to 3,000 members, and, and they, they thought that they've done something great. And then God lights it on fire, right? And it's all consumed. And so they're suffering loss. Not because they've like lost their salvation or anything like that, because, but because they had an expectation of reward, and now it's gone. That's the, that's the loss that's being suffered here. But, but they are believers. They are Christians. And so they have, though they haven't done well, they will be saved. Their, their salvation is not in jeopardy. Their eternal life is not in jeopardy. They're going to be good to go, even though, this is the really interesting part of this passage, only as one escaping through the flames, um, as one who goes through fire. They are going to be saved um, as one who escapes the flames. And so there's this picture of, of us in heaven and those who have built well, those who have done option one over here, they've built well in this life. In heaven, they go and they have great reward. In the coming age, they begin with great, great reward. And then there are those, option two, who who did not build well, who, who built with wood and hay and straw. And in eternity, uh, they will have no reward for what they've done, but they'll still be saved. They will still be in heaven, um, but as one who escapes through the flames. So the question is for us, right? How important is reward in heaven? The question for us is, you know, why do I need reward in heaven and the answer to that i think is we have no idea 
We have no idea, but we do know that Jesus tells us to store up treasures for ourselves. We do know that Paul tells us to set ourselves up well for eternity by storing up treasures for ourselves in heaven. And so what that means to me is that I don't know why I'll need this reward in heaven, but I definitely don't want to go into eternity as someone who just narrowly escaped a house fire and lost all their possessions. I do want to go to, into eternity as someone who has, who has rich reward. And so I need to do my best to build in a way that is careful. Coming back up here. This is the, this is the command, but each one should build with care. This is the central command of this passage. The rest is just teaching on this command. That's the take home. Everyone needs to build with care because it's going to be tested. What I think this means is, particularly for the Corinthians, they had been um, building division. They had been building churches that were probably growing, but they were growing in division. They were growing in their allegiance to Apollos and their allegiance to Paul and their allegiance to Cephas. And the result was that though an individual might say, look, I'm building on the foundation of Christ. My little house church is getting bigger and bigger. Um, I think we're doing well. You know, those Apollos followers over there, they're not so great. Those, those Cephas followers over there, they're not so great, but we are the followers of Paul. And we're just growing and growing and growing, and it's awesome. Our people are becoming, you know, more mature. They're being more missional. Uh, you know, I think this is this is really great. And I think what Paul is saying is the day you need to be careful. You need to be careful because the day is going to reveal that that is wood, hay, and straw. The kind of God, the growth that God is looking for, is not going to divide His body. It's going to grow it in in unity, and. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's what's going on in this passage. Every time we do this, I realize that I just write all over this. So sorry if it's hard to follow, but I hope that made sense. God bless.